17 purchases you think will improve your travel but won't. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some things I've purchased that I really ended up wasting my money on. They were things that I thought would make my travel faster, easier, more luxurious, better, more restful, and in the end, just ended up wasting my money. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of those mistake purchases or purchase regrets that I've had and share with you maybe some things you might want to purchase instead if you have had your eye on one of these items. Since this is a live stream, I'd also like to hear from all of you. If you've bought one of these things, if you think they're useful, maybe I'm all wrong or all wet. So let me know what you think about these 17 items. The first purchase that you think will improve your travel but won't is a passport case. That's right, you have seen these cases in every souvenir store in the world. A fancy case to put around your passport. This one's black, maybe they're pink, maybe they're blue. Maybe they'll make your passport look like the passport of another country. But these things end up being a ton of extra work if you buy one. Why? Because everybody who looks at your passport wants to take it off. That's right. You know, particularly because a lot of passports, they need to open them up to scan them now. And when they scan them, they can't have that big bulky passport case. Also, you know, they like to do this when you go through security to put stickers on the back of your passport and they won't put it on the back of the case. They will only put it on the back of your passport. Now, if you really do feel you need something to put your passport in, one of the things I actually like is I like uh, passport wallets which are actually much larger wallets that actually you can just store the passport in the wallet, it has a little pocket, it just slides out to take it. When I travel internationally, I travel with a Tumi passport wallet, a wallet big enough to put this in there. What do we hear? It sounds like something's ready in the kitchen. I wonder what is cooking. Everybody, what is cooking for you? Stanford Bridge says, I bought one. You bought a uh, passport case? If so, do you like it? And Point Traveler says, Chris, did you use the Floby today? If you are a regular viewer of Yellow Productions, you will notice my hair is shorter this week than it was last week. So yes, I use the Floby and I'm not wearing the headphones right now. So you can't tell uh, you know, whether I've got that hair. MT agrees, passport case, I bought one too and it's useless. Uh, Seth agrees with me about the passport wallet. Passport goes in, no cases. Stanford Bridge also likes the wallet. I will also say if you are going to buy a travel wallet, um, probably not like the one in this picture right here that's kind of a case that has a single pocket just for your credit card. Going internationally, it's really useful to be able to carry cash with you. All right, so people on the live, thank you for your opinions on the passport case. Now, uh, one couple other suggestions I have related to passports is uh, it's also beneficial to bring a copy of your passport. Put a copy of your passport in your suitcase. Put a copy of your passport in your backpack. There's two great reasons for that. One, if your passport ever does get stolen, having the copy is gonna be a lot easier to help you get a new one when you go to the embassy or places like that. Also, if you have a passport in your suitcase, if the tags come off your suitcase for some reason and they're trying to figure out whose suitcase that is because it got lost, having a copy of your passport in there will help them figure out whose suitcase that is. Uh, and Chris uh, noticed uh, my haircut and says he gave himself an isolation haircut. Doesn't look as good as yours. Well, Chris, you can always get one of those Floby vacuum haircutting devices that makes this pristine haircut cut. Uh, nice and clean, no mess either. All right, the second purchase you think will improve your travel but won't are travel pillows, in particular, neck pillows. Neck pillows are super bulky. You see these pillows at every airport store and all the people you see traveling around with them are the people who have traveled like once, twice, or three times. They carry these things around because they think it'll be really helpful. I think actually putting them on this way with the opening this way is almost like the wrong way because I feel like I almost need the, the closed side and this side because when you go to sleep, you go and want to go to sleep forward as opposed to backwards. But these really, they've never helped me sleep all that much. I have bought them, uh, this is not the panda shape one, but in particular, I used to travel around with this little travel pillow. Who's this travel pillow made by? It's made by this brand called uh, 
Quixote. I bought this pillow at REI for $70. I used it on a few of my trips and really found it's super bulky. I mean, I like it. It's a nice small pillow. It's soft, but it just takes up way too much space. And every hotel you go to will have pillows. You can get extra pillows. You know, I've taken to sometimes like folding pillows. So there's lots of things you can do with pillows to make them comfortable. Save your time, save your space, and skip the travel pillow. Uh, and Christoph, he agrees that actually that opening goes in the back for the pillows. That's not how you see most people actually using them. You see the closed part on the back. Brandon says the bane of travelers when sleeping. Scottman says I used to have a neck pillow, but I don't know what I did with it. Thankfully it was a gift, so I didn't have to spend anything. There you go. And Cliff, you lost it. You don't miss it all that much. Uh, our, uh, RT says I travel with a full-size Toto bidet. That is impressive. Uh, and it's really impressive if you do hook that up onto a plane. Uh, Joanne says, uh, Chris, this is the first time I catch you live. I want to thank you because I've been having anxiety lately. Listening to your videos helped me relax and fall asleep. Not why you make videos, but it's appreciated. Joanne, I, I think thank you. Although hopefully I'm not that boring that my videos put everybody to sleep. The third purchase that you think will improve your travel but won't are locks for your luggage. Luggage locks. These things pretty nearly useless. Why are they near useless? Because the TSA locks, many of them can actually just be opened with like a big pen. You can open it. The keys are easy to get. Somebody who wants to get in your luggage is not going to be foiled by a travel lock. I have also found that travel locks, because they're cheap, have a tendency to jam. And if it's jammed, then you, as the person who's not carrying special keys or bolt cutters with you when you travel are going to have a really time really hard time to get in your suitcase when they're locked our suitcases have built-in locks we never use them we never lock them actually on mine i've taped over it to make sure that the zippers never get in there because it is just not really a useful item uh my tube says you always see the locks falling off people's luggage for sure breaking off they're so cheap that when it goes around the baggage carousel those locks just break off and you see them going around there um and uh by the way uh notes on the pillow kathy says 70 dollars for a pillow points traveler says must be egyptian cotton yeah that's by the time i add the price of the pillow plus the pillow case you know anything you buy at rei if you don't have rei where you're from rei is a like a, almost like a camping adventure store. Anything you buy there's expensive. Like I said, it's nice and it's a really cool pillow. I would probably take this if I was going camping, but not when I go to a hotel that has plenty full pillows. Seth says a, a Bic pen can also pop open the zipper on the luggage at any point. That's a great point. You don't even need to open the lock if you just burst the zipper open and then get in that way. Uh, Shay says the locks give extra protection against hotel thieves, not when you just can open it with a pen or you can get those TSA things. They could also take your whole luggage, so um, I... I don't think so. And Joanne says, it wasn't an insult. You aren't boring, but soothing. Thank you, Joanne. I appreciate it. Um, Geoman says, I use a good master lock for hustles. That's a good idea. And actually, uh, probably a recommendation from Geoman there. And that is something you could buy if you are in hostels, you're in hotels, and you are worried about people opening your stuff. Get a real lock. Get an actual lock. Don't get one of these TSA locks. Brandon says, uh, luggage locks are not worth a cent, in my opinion. And uh, Kathy agrees with the, we couldn't open our suitcase when we got to LA, probably because the lock broke, she didn't say it, but we had to break open the bag for sure. I had an incident once where my suitcase locked when I got to Hawaii. I had to go to the place where they make it to open it up so that I could get into my luggage. Luckily, the Ramoa store, which is all the suitcases that I travel with, and it's one of the things I'll be talking about as we get later on in this live stream. Luckily, there was a Ramoa store floor, four blocks from my hotel, so it wasn't a big deal to go there. They replaced the lock because it was uh, broken within warranty for free. Nice thing Ramoa does, but something I'd rather just not have done. Oh, my tube says the things they always see falling off aren't locks, but pillows falling off the luggage or people struggling with them. That's too right? You definitely don't want to use this pillow once it's been on the floor of the airplane or the floor of the airport. 
Uh, and Artie points out that REI is the Whole Foods of Adventure Gear. It is. I love REI. It's an amazing store. It is like the Whole Foods of Adventure Gear. That's a great way to describe it. But that also means, yeah, it's not cheap. Uh, Doris Day says, colored duct tape is the best thing for identifying luggage. Great tip, Doris Day. Some of my luggage, I do have uh, yellow duct tape on it. I've also taken to getting yellow smiley face stickers and putting them on my luggage. Less so for me to identify my luggage and more so so that other people, when they look at my luggage, realize it's not theirs um, so I'm actually less worried about being able to find mine and just more worried about people not taking mine again because they think it's theirs uh, Fred says the audio is clipping too loud maybe turn it down well it's one of the things working on on this uh, live stream new microphone setup on this one so I'll figure out the proper audio levels for this one uh, that's how it sounds to Fred. How does the sound, uh, how does the sound sound to everybody else? And, uh, maybe I'll go over there and check out that audio when we get to Q&A, turn it down a little bit. Uh, all right. The fifth thing that's a waste of money, uh, are designer toiletry bags. You've seen these things at department stores, Nordstrom's, where... It's by Louis Vuitton. It's made of leather. It's fancy. These things can cost upwards of $100. And really, I feel like the bigger the brand name it is or the fancier the materials are, the more useless it actually is. Save your money. Save your $100. Buy my favorite uh, travel bag. My favorite toiletry bag is this one by Jansport. Uh, in this live stream, I'm going to show you actually what's inside my toiletry bag. I don't think I've ever gone through this on YouTube before, uh, so I'll share with you what I carry as toiletries once we've made it through the 17 other items. But this is like 30 bucks instead of the $100 or more for the designer ones. Uh, all right, and uh, other people say audio sounds good, so all right, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I am on tech says I use a zip tie instead of a lock. I think that will foil thieves just as well who won't want to break open that zip tie. And then if you've got some cutters, that's pretty easy to open. Uh, Kathy suggests using a ribbon uh, to identify the luggage. Fancy, fancy. All right, that's cool. Christoph suggests the only good toiletry bag is a fold-out one for cruise ship walls. I agree with you. This one is a fold-out one. You'll see it's got hooks in it and things like that. I'm sure you've all seen them before, but I'll share the inside of this one, uh, too. So those are the ones I like. Always one that hangs. All right. The fifth thing uh, that you think will improve your travel but won't are mini toiletries. You've seen them at Target. You've seen the Walmart. You've seen them at high-end cosmetic stores. Little small bottles of whatever soap, shampoo. They cost 10 times as much because they're in these little tiny small bottles. The sale is so that you can take it through security. My recommendation, if you have a favorite soap, shampoo that you have to travel with, um, just take the mostly empty bottle with you with just a little bit in there of your conditioner shampoo that's often what oc girl does when she's just got you know a little works her way down to have a little bit left sometimes people buy reusable bottles that they then fill up i find those often don't stay as tight as the original factory bottles so it's better to take the the factory bottle of soap or shampoo put it into another bottle for you to use at home that you know, isn't as sturdy and then take the sturdier one with you to go on travel. But if you are going to be carrying on or you need some small ones, then what I actually recommend, I recommend um, figuring out what hotels you like their soaps and shampoos at and then bringing back home extras. In particular, some of my favorite uh, little soaps that I bring back from hotels, uh, Le Labo Park Hyatt's give these out. Uh, this one comes from the Park Hyatt, Washington, D.C. I really like these soaps. Le Labo, if you don't know, like a large container. How large? What, what is this container? This is like 1.6 ounces, but like an 8-ounce bottle of Le Labo hand wash or body wash is like $60. So these little ones for free as a stay, pretty good. Uh, I also like Aroma Therapy and Associates. Uh, this one, here, let's see if it'll oh, focus. Focus. Folk, do it. Focus. Focus. 
Okay, well, you'll just have to take my word for it that that says Aromatherapy and Associates. JW Marriott's often give these out, as do Conrad Hotels. Uh, and I also like Molten Brown, which is a uh, British UK brand. And you might say, Chris, how do you end up with all these? Did you buy these little ones or things like that? Well, you know, every day the hotel's going to restock your soaps. And yeah, there are some people that use their soaps like a whole thing every day in a hotel. I don't. So the ones I really like, then I just put that little one in my suitcase and I get a new one the next day. Uh, Point Traveler says Andaz Maui's male soaps. I love the soaps at the Andaz Maui. They are amazing as well. Male male. They're like these uh, coconut scented soaps. They are really good. Um, Christoph says, hey, if you are enjoying this video, please like it. Thank you, Christoph. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Fellow explorers, when you encourage other people to like this video, there's 120 people on 33 likes. Please do like it because every like of this video tells the YouTube algorithm uh, that you like it so that they should share it with other people. It really helps me out. And it also helps out the Yellow Productions crew because every like of this video goes to feed them one piece of premium bamboo. So please, I already see the like going up now. We're at 34, so that's one piece of premium bamboo. Then we're up to 36, three pieces of premium bamboo for the Yellow Productions crew. Uh, Twitting Sarah loves molten brown. It is a pretty nice uh, scent and just good soaps. Points Traveler says great light packs tonight. Thank you, Points Traveler. I feel like tonight I'm talking about all the things that they just, none of these uh, are good for a video by themselves, but they're all like important things to share and important things I've learned. And I love hearing from you all in the chat because I learn a lot. Um, from you when I do these videos too. Um, Stanford Bridge says, I've had good use with a small reusable uh, shampoo bottle. All right, thank you for that Stanford Bridge. Maybe you've bought better ones than we've we've bought in the past. Doris Day says, uh, Ziploc is the best toiletry bag. Yes, my recommendation, and I got this to talk about a different thing, but if you do take uh, the reusable ones or things like that, put them in a Ziploc bag so that then um, they don't leak, that then they don't leak in your luggage. All right. The Speaking of bags, the sixth item that you think will improve your travel but won't are vacuum bags. Uh, in the beginning of our travels, we bought a lot of these things and I would pack my clothes into them and vacuum it out and roll it up and the ones that you squeeze. And it seemed kind of cool and it made things kind of small, uh, except two big fail things with this. One is these bags when rolled and used a lot, fail fast. They leak. And when they leak, they aren't very good at being vacuum bags. Two, uh, they also make your clothes wrinkle a ton. For me, I've just taken the method where I roll my clothes. I roll my shirts. I roll my pants. I roll my socks. And then I use some uh, packing cubes instead. Uh, in particular, let's see, these are from eBags. I like the ones from Eagle Creek as well. And, you know, these things, they're just little bags that then you can put um, shirts, socks, right? You just, you know, if you got a bunch of socks, you just put them in that packing cube and then you zip it up and then you know all of your socks are in this one. So that's generally how I do it. I put my socks in one, my underwear in another one, all my yellow t-shirts in another one. And so then it's just really easy to pull out the three packing cubes, take one from each, and then I've got my attire for the day. Um, all right. Du, 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 du. Uh, SoCal Seth agrees, I prefer packing cubes to vacuum bags. Good good uh, minds think alike. Brandon says the vacuum bags are a big hassle to use every time. Twitting Sarah says, I find if I overpack, I use those vacuum boot bags. I find the one use case to me that's maybe reasonable for the vacuum bags is if you're going to like some winter destination and you've got like super bulky, puffy jackets, then the the vacuum bags can help, especially if you're overpacking, but just know that the vacuum bags are not going to last you very long at all. Um, Lorena says, I enjoy watching your videos. I travel a lot and never use a ton of small shampoo bottles I have. It's a waste of money. Bring them home with you, Lorena. Seriously. You know, I've got uh, these sitting here, but to, to show that I actually bring more home and where do I store them? Uh, you know, like the cases that I get, I got this from Traveling United Business Class once inside this case. Then I've got some more of that molten brown of the one I pocketed every day from one of the hotels we were staying at that gave out the molten brown soaps. I'm curious, any, anybody else here like to use their uh, hotel toiletries at home or am I, the, am I the only really cheapest one? 
Um, Melanie says, I only like the vacuum bags for home storage. Great point, Melanie. We do use them at home um, for like our um, comforters and things like that as a use like every six months for storing your winter things or things like that. They don't fail quite as fast. Packing, repacking every couple days, they just fail super quickly. And uh, Jay says, I can definitely see why you'd want a separate bag just for yellow shirts. That's all I travel with now. I just travel with yellow shirts. So yes, it needs its own bags. Uh, and Seth says, in a lot of ways, we're twins. Perhaps Seth. Brothers brothers from another mother, we may be. Okay. The seventh uh, thing that you think will improve your travel but won't are designer suitcases. Also, black suitcases, in particular, ballistic nylon suitcases. Now, I'm going to unpack these because there's a few different categories that go in here. What do I mean by designer suitcases? This is where I put it in the, the Louis Vuitton, the Chanel, these fancy brands, these things you spend a lot of money on because you want them to look nice. The first time you check that thing in, it's going to be trashed. Uh, so save your money on the super expensive ones for things that are more durable. I am thirsty. What am I drinking today? Today I am drinking Japanese matcha and ginger tea by Matcha Love. I've never had this before. I picked this up at Tokyo Central the other day. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. I like it. I can taste both the matcha and the ginger. It has a pretty strong ginger flavor. So if you like ginger, you might like this. Actually, I taste more ginger than I do matcha tea. By the way, if you're not familiar with Japanese matcha tea, got a thing here on the back that says when you drink matcha tea you're actually drinking the whole the whole tea leaf matcha tea they grind the tea leaves and then it's the powder of the tea leaves that are in here as opposed to just drinking the water that goes through the tea leaves all right i'll be drinking that more as i continue to get thirstier um gene says what do you think of ramoa luggages i'm looking to buy all right gene i I think Ramoa suitcases are the best. We travel exclusively with Ramoa suitcases. Here, let me get this off the screen so you can see this suitcase. Um, this is uh, actually OC Girls Ramoa suitcase right here. We like them because they're super durable. They come in plastic versions and they come in aluminum versions. I think the aluminum versions are a little too heavy, but the plastic versions are super light. We love the wheels on them. This suitcase has traveled hundreds of thousands of miles on planes and you can see uh, it like it travels quite well. It's not beat, it's not dinged, it's a little bit dirty, but anything that happens on the plane, that happens too. And in those hundreds of thousands of miles through cobblestones, this and that, the wheels work like a champ, they don't break. And Ramoa offers an excellent warranty. You can take like almost anything that breaks from Ramoa store and they'll just go ahead and fix it. Ramoa suitcases are expensive, but we think they are worth every penny. Uh, if you can't afford one, where you are because they're expensive, make a trip to Germany, like go there for vacation and buy them there because they're a lot cheaper in Germany. Oh, the other thing I want to mention about suitcases is I always like the ones that have the four wheels at the bottom because just being able to take it every which way, slide it this way down the airplane aisle when you're carrying it on, super useful. Um, I got I got into the Ramoa suitcases after a, an incident of my luggage getting like destroyed by rain and mold and it was a black ballistic nylon suitcase that they claim are waterproof they're so not like if they get caught in a thunderstorm everything's getting wet it's getting soaked but the Ramoa suitcases things are going to stay dry um, the only thing you lose if you have those four wheels at the bottom as compared to um, maybe one like this that just has two wheels it has a little less space because as you could imagine or as you could see the four wheels take up some room, um, but I think the durability, the lightness, and the ease of use uh, easily makes up for that issue. Brandon says, I love four wheel luggage. Uh, Joanne says, I'm going to try to travel to Vegas with only carry on. Do you think, or is anyone else, how to cram the most stuff in a small suitcase? That's probably a topic for another video. How do you? Cram the most stuff in a small suitcase. Maybe that's a, a video uh, idea for a future. Stanford Bridge says, I really like my away suitcase. Uh, Brandon says, I'm an ambassador to Ramoa. 
uh, no cost ambassador. By the way, this video, not sponsored. There's no affiliate links in it. So, you know, take it or leave it. Uh, this advice if you want to buy these things or not. Uh, Doris says, hard case or better your stuff doesn't get squished. I agree. Um, we've uh, not had things break in there. Seth says, I've had fantastic luck with Toomey bags, though I've not checked a bag in 15 years. Uh, while I don't have Toomeys, I know a lot of people that have them and they uh, rave about them as well. Chicken Marsala says, I want my luggage to look as unassuming as possible for sure. The good news is there's lots of people that travel with Ramoas. Just make yours really dirty and it'll look more unassuming. Uh, than others um, so uh, I prefer hard cases to soft cases definitely points trailer says how much is that bag we paid $300 for that carry-on bag I, like I think on Ramoa.com in the US they're probably 600 or something now they've gone up in price significantly but like I say in Germany they're about half the price of, of what you find them in many places the Eight thing that you think will improve your travel but won't are document organizers. Uh, you might think that having something that has lots of pockets and different places to store things will keep you super organized as you go through security instead or through airports. Instead, they just end up taking up a lot of space. They're hard, they're heavy, um, they're inconvenient to carry. Uh, uh, as compared to a document organizer, I just prefer a uh, simple paper folder right here. I, this is what I'll often put my stuff in. I like paper folders that have two pockets. That way my stuff doesn't fall out. But if I need to carry a lot of papers, the simple paper folder works uh, good. Also, a large Ziploc bag um, can work in lieu of the paper folder or the document organizer, but they're light. They don't take up weight uh, and easy to take around for all of your important things. Now, people say, well, Chris, can't you just carry everything digital? in this age of just have everything on your phone, boarding pass on your phone, itinerary on your phone. Your phone battery can die, number one. Your phone can get stolen, number two. Number three, when you're at like customs or something like that and they're like, hey, can you show us your itinerary or your return ticket? It's just so much easier to be able to pull out your paper copy that you have in your folder that they can look at and you're like, here it is. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. As opposed to fumbling with your phone and making it big and small and handing it to them and then people's grimy hands on your phone. Anyway, not not something that I want. Uh, Seth says, I would only take a document organizer for a cruise. Seth, why? Why do you think a document organizer is important for a cruise? Or you would take it for a cruise because you're just checking in, you're keeping it in your room, and you're not uh, carrying it around with you. Um, now, Stanford Bridge points out the problem with hard suitcases we were talking about earlier is it's less easy to overstuff them. That is true. Um, but uh, I agree. The Uniplex X, if I print out all my tickets, etc., I do. I print out all t like all flight itineraries, rental car reservations, hotel reservations. Uh, I print out all of our boarding passes. Uh, basically, anything that's document that I think I'm going to need. And then even like uh, show notes that I prepare for YouTube videos, I print them out as well. Even though they're all in my email, I can get them all on my phone. All my notes are in Google Drive. Having that hard copy means if I don't have internet, there's no service, whatever, I've still got that information and it's super useful and super easier just to pull it out, frankly. Um, and uh, a lot of discussion about suitcases, which is great. Mel says, I hate the 50-50 split hard-sided suitcases. They're hard to open on luggage racks. I want to find a traditional split hard-sided. Yeah, I don't know why they... I don't know why they don't make those. What, what Mel is talking about, and I would agree, it's the biggest downfall of these things is that um, the opening is in the middle instead of on the side. And so... Um, you've got like half your stuff in the top and half your stuff in the bottom and so you need a, a large luggage rack or a large area to open them because it's not just a bottom and like a top that opens up but it's like the whole clamshell that opens and you gotta open the whole thing. That is definitely a drawback of the hard side clamshell suitcases. The ninth thing that you think might improve your travel but won't are travel towels you see these things everywhere these like fast drying quick drying towels honestly i think if you need to pack a towel where you're traveling i think you're traveling to the wrong place obviously i i like to travel to nice hotels and any nice hotel you can request more towels and after that you can request even more towels and if it's a stingy hotel they'll want to take your old towels before they give you the new ones but still um, I don't think you need to travel with a towel. The exception here is if you're camping. Uh, if you're camping, maybe you want a, a small towel, but 
not if you're going to any reasonable first world hotel. The 10th thing that you think will improve your travel but won't are new shoes. Boy, everybody makes this mistake, I think, to be like, hey, I'm going on a trip, my shoes are old, I've seen these, I think these new shoes would be really great to take on my trip. Don't do it, don't make that mistake, never take new shoes with you on a trip, always break them in, wear them for a few weeks before you take them because inevitably those new shoes that you wear, they're gonna be uncomfortable, they're gonna give you blisters, they're gonna make your feet hurt, and if that happens on the first day of your trip, that's gonna be pretty miserable. Now, related to shoes, I wanted to share with you guys the shoes that I'm currently wearing. I love these shoes. I've previously been like a Nike shoe purchaser my whole life, always wearing Nike shoes. Uh, my new shoe of choice are these, and let me get that picture out of the way. These are by a brand called Hoka One One, which sounds like one one. Uh, and these are the Bondi shoes. By the way, if you're like, Chris, those are really big shoes. I wear size 14, you know, um, so I got big feet. Uh, and these come in size 14, but they've got these huge soles on them. They're super plushy, really great for walking on cobblestones, really great for um, walking on concrete, hard places. Ever since I've been wearing these, my feet are so much more comfortable. Uh, so I would recommend if you've got um, feet that you're like, I just, I don't know. Like, like particularly wide feet. These the Bondi shoes are good for wide feet. You want them extra padded? I uh, look into these. They come in all sorts of colors. Not the cheapest shoe, but super comfortable. Now the other thing I want to talk about related to shoes are socks. And this is a travel epiphany I had maybe five years ago when I was in Sweden. And I used to just buy like socks from Costco or socks from Target or wherever you buy socks. You know, white cotton socks. You buy them and bulk of 50 or whatever and they last you for 10 wearings and then you got to throw them away. Now I buy uh, wool socks for travel exclusively. These socks are by a company called Smart Wool. Um, they're the best socks ever. Actually to tell you how much I like these socks, I'm not just holding them but actually I got them in the mail today. I ordered six more of these socks. How much do these socks cost? new full price, they're about $20 a sock. You can find them on a lot of clearance sites for often like $10 a sock, which is what these roughly were, so that you can see the brand of these. Smart wool, um, but they are made of, uh, what does it say on here? It's got the material. 58% wool, 40% nylon, and 2% elastane. Best thing, two best things about these. One, since I've been wearing these, I've had no blisters. I used to get blisters all the time on travel. I walk a lot. You go on travel, you walk 10, 15 miles in a day maybe, or I do, because I walk a lot. Uh, and I'd end up with blisters on my second or third day, which made the rest of the trip awful. With these, no blisters ever again. Um, and also, it says right back here, no stink. They don't smell at all. They don't smell at all. I will say, though, one thing I've learned, because um, like no sock can be perfectly sweat absorbent and uh, we're, and we're being real now, right? I, I'm amongst friends here. My feet sweat a lot, a lot. My feet are gross. They sweat a lot, but they don't stink in these. Uh, but I do when I go out on travel um, throughout the day, I carry a second pair of socks. So like midway through the day, I actually change out my socks to another pair because my feet just sweat so much um, that you know when your socks get like super wet, then they're not absorbent, they're not helpful, and then you get blisters. So that's a pro tip for you if you've never thought about it. If you do get blisters and you're prone to it, one, check out smart wool socks. Number two, carry a second pair with you through the day. Go ahead and uh, change them out. Uh the 11th thing that you think will improve your travel but won't is travel insurance. In particular, especially if you thought it covered you during the pandemic but didn't. Now, I'm not here to tell you not to buy travel insurance, but I am here to tell you that if you're going to buy travel insurance, make sure it covers the things that you actually want it to cover. Many people buy a travel insurance policy thinking that it covers them in all situations, but travel insurance policies often have a lot of caveats and only cover really specific things. And so make sure that if you want it to cover a pandemic or these sorts of things, that the travel insurance you're actually buying um, actually does that. All right. So the 12th thing that is related to insurance people often buy when they don't need it is rental car insurance. I'm sure all of you have had that hard sell at the rental car counter 
95% of people do not need the rental car insurance. It's just a waste of money for most people, particularly if you're traveling domestically in your home company, home country. Typically, your car insurance company that you use to insure your car, provided you have one, uh, will also cover rental cars. To be sure, you can call them and find out and make sure it does, but we have State Farm. For us, State Farm covers us when we're in a rental car as well. Um, And they may cover it internationally too. So you may find they might cover it in neighboring countries, uh, but also your credit card company may provide insurance. And particularly if you have a Chase Sapphire card, like the Chase Sapphire uh, Reserve, comes with premium rental car insurance, and then you don't need to buy rental car insurance ever. The 13th thing that you think might save your money and might be a good deal is earning credit card rewards internationally. I should use my credit card to earn rewards and miles when I'm in this country. What most people don't realize is that most credit cards have really high international transaction fees. So if you're going to do that, make sure you're taking a credit card that does not have international transaction fees because those international transaction fees of you know 3% or more can eat away any rewards that you thought you were earning. Also on this one, uh, if you are you have a balance and you're paying off a balance and you're paying interest and you think that you're going to earn rewards with that, that's a bad plan. Really only use rewards earning credit cards if you're paying off your balance every month. Otherwise, it's not worth the rewards for the interest that you pay. The... 14th thing that you think may improve your travel, but it's just a waste of money, are city passes. Most cities have one of these, uh, and it's usually a waste of money unless you're visiting the attractions more as a checkbox. What do I mean by these things? So the way these passes work is typically you pay, you know, 100, 200, 300 dollars, euros, whatever the currency is where you're going, and then you get to go into, you know, 100 attractions in this city over a period of time, three days, five days. Uh, But these things are priced so high that unless you're just going to be going to most of these attractions for five or 10 or 30 minutes, that if you like, say you're going to Paris and you actually plan to stay at the Louvre for a day, and then you plan to go to another museum for a long period of time, you won't be able to go to enough places to save enough money on the city pass. Um, Now, I will say I have used this Paris one and because I calculated out to be like, these are the places I want to go. And when I was going to Paris, I had like two days and I was doing the check mark tour. Then it actually was a money saver. Um, and sometimes they'll help you skip the line. Like if you're in a place that has long lines, one of these passes might help you skip the line because you're already paid. Um, but really do your research if you're going to buy one of these. Uh, oh, by the way, there's a conversation about um, international transaction fees and... Uh, ATM cards, I've talked about this before, but uh, for people in the U.S. that want to open a bank account to use their ATM internationally to withdraw money, Charles Schwab has the best because they do not charge any international withdrawal fees for international ATM withdrawals. That is, in fact, the card we use when you travel internationally. The 15th thing uh, that you may think might be a good travel purchase but isn't are very large sun hats. Uh, You've seen people wearing these at the pool. They look cool. They are really hard to pack in a suitcase. They get wrinkled. They take up a lot of space. And if you're taking one of these things to the beach because they're big, they pick up a lot of wind. Because they pick up a lot of wind, they fly off all the time. And in that case, you'll really want a hat maybe that has like a chin strap on it right here, you know, something like this. Yeah, there we go. I think this is this is more useful than one of those sun hats on travel because at least if you wear this, it's not it's not going to fly off anywhere because it's got a got a chin strap. So definitely invest in your sun hat with a chin strap. All right. If I had like a, I would have done it right there. The sixteenth thing that you think may improve your travel but won't are solar powered phone chargers. I'm sure you've all seen these. You see this in the Sky Mall magazine, or you see this as a Facebook ad, like. Are you out and about traveling a lot, and does your phone need to get recharged? Well, carry a solar-powered charger. You never have to recharge the solar-powered thing. You just put it in the sun, except 
that unless you're camping, you likely won't be spending enough time out in the sun, out in one place. You'll be spending time, you know, in museums, in theaters, in restaurants where your solar powered charger isn't going to do all that great. And because it's solar powered, it doesn't charge as fast as something that plugs in. Uh, I just recommend getting a battery pack. They charge a lot better. They're much more convenient. You can just charge it the night before in your hotel. Uh, so leave the solar powered phone chargers for the campers. The 17th thing that you think will improve your travel but won't, and I'm sure this one's going to be controversial. So I'm sure many of you have these and love them, but is drones. Uh, you know, even if you're really into aerial photography, carrying one of these things around while you're traveling is a huge amount of space. And in most places, you can't even use drones uh, because of safety reasons or security reasons. For example, here in Orange County, the city of Laguna Beach is entirely a no drone zone. The number of places you can fly drones is so small. The number of restrictions to be able to fly them is so high. Uh, and, you know, if you're taking them through security, well, you're definitely going to get some extra inspections when you go through airports with your drone in your luggage. The last one is not purchased. This is a bonus one, number 18, um, but timeshare presentations. Uh, timeshare presentations are a purchase with your time. Your vacation time is valuable as well, uh, and so rarely is it worthwhile to sit in a timeshare presentation when you've taken time off work, spent a bunch of time to get a place, just so you can get free show tickets. Now, there's a lot of people who say, Chris, I love timeshare presentations. I get a lot of free things on it. Knock yourself out. Most people hate them. So if you're somebody who hasn't been to one yet, likely, since most people hate them, you're one of the people that would hate them. So just don't even dive into it. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, as we begin Q&A time, I want to share the latest submission to the Yellow Productions Summer Return to Travel Competition. Soul from San Francisco sent this in last week. It is a Panda Fit Fresh insulated lunch bag. Soul, thank you for this. This is the first submission to the physical panda item category. Uh, Kathy, I believe, said she sent one, but it hasn't got here yet. And so I know I said submissions were open until September 15th. I'm going to keep it open for two more weeks, Kathy, to hope your item gets here from Australia. And then uh, I'll help you all pick the winners beginning of October when all the items get here. If you haven't submitted one yet, I'm still taking photos. If you're in a yellow shirt, someplace you traveled to or are traveling to this summer, or if you made a video of you in a yellow shirt, then I'll feature it here on the Yellow Productions uh, channel. All right, so if you asked a question earlier and I didn't answer it, go ahead and ask it again, and uh, we'll take a few questions right here. Jay says, have you ever traveled to South America? Uh, no, no, I've never been to South America. Furthest south I've been in um, the Americas is uh, Mexico. Uh, so that's uh, something to do. Uh, Randy says, uh, do you have a P.O. box? Send stuff like other YouTubers. Yeah, if you, uh, I think in the description of this video, actually, uh, you will find uh, my P.O. box if you wish to send an item into the Yellow Production Summer Travel Competition. And uh, the Panda, if it's the only one, it might be the one that wins its spot right here in the Yellow Productions background. People who win are going to be getting exclusive Yellow Productions hoodies. All right. Um, and uh, Christoph says, if you want to feed that lunch bag, it's a panda, it's hungry, it needs bamboo, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Christoph, thank you for the reminder. I appreciate it. Uh, and the uh, Uniplex says, what's the address? Again, just go ahead and expand the description of this video. Uh, you'll see it right in there. Uh, Stanford says, I bet that keeps the bamboo. I bet it does. I think it keeps it nice and cold, so it'll keep it quite fresh. Um, Gene says, do you recommend a reliable VPN for travel? I recommend a VPN for travel. Um, I just use a random provider. I don't know that I've used enough to recommend one over another, um, but I would absolutely recommend using a VPN when you're in hotels um, because on Wi-Fi, a lot of people can easily snoop on what you're doing. Scottman uh, says about drones, I have been reluctant for buying a drone due to all the limitations for uh, where you can find them for sure, Scottman. Um, all right. 
Jeremy says, do you plan on adding the Don Quixote penguin to the family in addition to the Topher pandas? You know, there's so many different animals I guess I could add, uh, but right now the Yellow Productions crew is exclusively pandas. I guess Don Quixote penguin is a black and white animal, although the Don Quixote penguin is blue, which is slightly a odd color for a penguin. Um... Now, the YouTube experiment helps me out here so that I can just put it up on the screen. Thank you very much, YouTube experiment. Uh, that's the address right there. If you wanted to send a physical item in to the physical item section of uh, the Return to Travel Summer Competition Pandas to potentially go back here. Um, if you're going to send one now, let me know, uh, and then I'll make sure I uh, hold the selection time for when they get here. Miras asks, what's my favorite restaurant in Waikiki? My favorite restaurant in Waikiki is Tonkatsu Ginza Byron. I've got a video all about it. I think they have the best katsu, which is um, breaded Japanese breaded pork cutlet uh, in the USA. Super delicious. I eat there every time I go. I also like Tim Ho Wan for dim sum, which is in the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. I like Marogame Udon for Japanese noodles, though the lines can be really long. Cameron asks, how are you doing? I am doing quite well. How are you doing, Cameron? Um, and Cameron says he wants a shout-out. I think you just got one with how you doing. Uh, Valerian the Mac asks, if I've been up to the Pacific Northwest. I've been to both Washington and Oregon State. I uh, have at least one or two videos on Seattle. We didn't do any videos while we were in Oregon. Um, so yes, our, our next trip is up to Vancouver, up on the Canada side. Uh, Eric says, uh, was the neck pillow on the list? Yes, travel pillows in general were on the list. Yeah, I got one right here just to prove it. So indeed. Uh, MTS, if I use international SIM cards or just buy a one month international pass on your existing, T -mo um, existing mobile plan. Uh, so for me, I have uh, T-Mobile, and T-Mobile, the plan I have has unlimited international data, although it's at slower speeds, uh, and so I generally just do that and use the slower speeds, try to find Wi-Fi when I need something faster. For OC Girl, she has Verizon, which uh, doesn't really do an easy, cheap, unlimited international data plan, so then we'll buy her uh, a SIM card, unless we're in some place like Japan, where maybe, or Korea, where it's better just to get a hotspot. We don't really call much from our phones. We just use data. And so sometimes getting the hotspots are just better because then we can both connect our phone to the hotspots. Like in Japan, that's really important because even a lot of the international phones you buy other places don't have an, like all the Japanese bands, particularly rural countries. Cameron asks if I've been to the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Yes, I've got a whole video review on it. Um, you can check it out along with a lot of my other Waikiki uh, reviews. Joanne wasn't if I would recommend the Excalibur buffet in Vegas. Uh, no, I would not. I don't think that's a very tasty buffet. Um, uh, Vancouver next uh, here coming up in the fall. Joanne says, come to Montreal, Canada someday. We'll put that on the list further than Vancouver. There's new direct flights that fly out of Orange County to Vancouver on Air Canada, so we're taking advantage of that new flight that they're offering. Uh, I am says, I just bought a piece of away luggage in the large side. It has no handle at the bottom to easily pick up. What do you recommend instead? No handle at the bottom. I don't know. N honestly, none of the luggage that I have has handles at the bottom. M most of the luggages I've had just have handles at the top and handles on the side. Even this one, because it's a carry-on, doesn't have handles on the side. But most of them I have maybe has one here and have one up here. Uh, I also like Travel Pro suitcases as a maybe less expensive brand uh, than Ramoa's. Booba says, hey, when are you coming to Vegas or do you have any coverage? Next week, the live stream is going to be all about Vegas. Uh, I will be joined by uh, Dale and Paula McKenzie of the channel Las Vegas Inside and Out. We're going to be talking about their favorite parts about Las Vegas. And we'll also be talking about Dale uh, used to be a professional musician in Las Vegas. And so we're going to talk about what it's like to be a musician in Las Vegas. So you can stay tuned for that a week from today, Tuesday. 4.45 p.m. Los Angeles time, usual time, usual channel. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, this is the time in the show where I give away a Yellow Productions crew shirt to a lucky winner. Oh, I said I was going to I said I was gonna go through this, huh? What's in my bag? And I think we're out of time on this one, so I'll probably do that another time. Static issues probably got some of but I wanted to get to questions, so we'll go through my uh, toiletry bag another time. 
what's in my toiletry bag might be a good video of its own. So my question for you to win uh, a Yellow Productions Crew shirt is what are my three favorite hotel toiletry brands? If you can name my favorite three hotel toiletry brands, all three of them, in the same chat message, then you will win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt shipped to you anywhere in the world. In this case, um, close will count because you might not be able to remember them all. Uh, if you can, if you can read well, they're actually actually just right here. They've been in the frame the whole time. So, uh, or maybe you can't read because they're small, but you know what these things look like. I did orate them at one point, so this is for really good listeners. Uh, while you all answer that. Um, Meritocratic Mafia says, can you collab with All You Can Vegas? In my last uh, Las Vegas update, actually, uh, All You Can Vegas had a little cameo in there. If you haven't seen it yet, um, check out my Las Vegas uh, August reopening update. Uh, All You Can Vegas uh, talked about the opening of Resorts World. Okay. Um, so people say, people say this is too hard. It's too hard. Let's see. How hard is this? Does that focus? Does that focus? It doesn't focus with my eyes on it. But I think we got that in focus. There's one. Here's two. Da, 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 da. Oh, focus. Focus. Don't find my eyes. Focus on this. Focus on this. Okay, that's out of focus, but maybe you can read it. And this one. Well, hey, if you just get those two, then... Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, Amy says, I'll sit this one out, give everyone a fighting chance. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, 45 more thumbs up. Let's see, Uniplex says, Old Spice. Kristoff says, Blue Bottle, Small White, Brown Bottles. Mel says, The Yellow One, The Blurry One, and The Yellow Clear One. Oh, this is definitely hard for people. Uh, Shay says, I want a shirt for the hard question. Yeah, I know it's a hard question. You really got to listen to this one. So, um, all right. Well, in uh, this case, this was clearly a really hard one. I think that uh, we'll go ahead uh, and, and people, here we go. This is This is the... This is the first and the closest, and Caroline answered it right at the same time that Kathy did. But Caroline, congratulations. And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. You were the first one to say Le Labo and Molten Brown, which are two of my favorites. The third one is Aromatherapy and Associates. So Caroline, send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. You will find a link in the description to that video, to that email address. Let me know uh, what size you want and where you want me to send it, and I will get a Yellow Productions Crew shirt right on the way to you. Uh, now, I mentioned next live stream is going to be next week, all about uh, the favorite things to do in Vegas, what it's like to be a musician. By the way, if you haven't joined my update mailing list where you'll know all these things ahead of time, uh, head over to update.yellow-productions.com and join my email list for announcements of future videos and future live streams. Well, fellow explorers, it's been a pleasure to hang out with you all for the last hour. I hope I've shared some of my mistake purchases with you so you don't have to make those mistakes anymore and some other things that you can buy. Um, you know, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video. And I just thought I would put this hat on again, which probably would have worked better without this microphone and the other one. I'll figure out those static issues, and I'll see you all next time.